Hey y'all, so just got back from the cruise. As you can see, I'm finally just now getting a chance to watch this supposed apparent diatribe that happened with Greg on February 4th. Um, and I figure why not watch it live? Like I'll watch it for the first time and you can watch with me as I watch this to see what he says. So, um, yeah, let's just go into this. I don't know how long this is going to take. People said he went on for an hour. I've got it queued up to a minute or an hour 5402. If you started talking before that, I don't care. We're going to start it here and <laughs> see what happens and I'll maybe pause along the way to offer a footnote or two, but here we go. You're going to get my raw and honest reaction. And that is exactly what you're doing. What Jen and Matt Rockwell have done to this church. We've caused... Yeah, look up in here. I called your name. We've caused strife or division or something. I'm not having it. Listen to me. There's like, I don't know, 220, 225, give or take a, a couple, on that page. So that's not a lot. Right? No, it's not a lot. Um, dog, chill. Even my dog's like, this guy's crazy. Why are we listening to him? Um, yeah, when he did this, we had, I think we had 200 and maybe 23 people on the page. And now we are over 2,500. We actually got to 2,600. And then I started calling people out for um, hate. Like just being hateful and ugly to Greg and and saying stuff that they didn't know what they were talking about and yeah you know, I'm not I'm not about that like if you can't prove what you're saying or you don't you don't know Greg like you're talking from from what you see on on the internet and as we know he live like that is all manner of crazy but anyway okay so yeah we had two hundred and I think two hundred twenty three people uh. At the beginning of the at the beginning of this rant. So not a lot of people. It's not. Until you start recognizing all of the people that that they're connected with. So I'm gonna tell you something. Yeah, that's true because 220 or so people, even just that number, that's more than Greg you currently have on a Sunday morning. And if you count that the 220 people in my group represent one person in a family of four, that's over 800 people. So my page, just the number of people represented there are bigger than your church currently, like your in-person attenders. So yeah, that would make me nervous too, if I were you. So I get it. I understand why you're nervous about that. Hey, listen, you do realize we have people on your page. <laughs> Yes. Yes, Greg. I do realize that. I realize that from the beginning. That's not surprising to me. You act like I didn't go to the church and like I don't. Listen, the problem at, at Global Vision is the insane amount of gossip that goes on at that church. The fact that everybody tells on everybody. It's the strangest thing. The number of people that, I mean, I had been there for a couple of weeks and I had people telling me stuff. I was shocked at the things that people would say to me. But yes, I do know that Katie Guffey makes fake Facebook pages. And I do know that Jordan Burrow makes fake Facebook pages. And yes, Greg, I do know that you make fake Facebook pages. You can't help yourself. You can't help yourself. Because listen, here's the thing. Those who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. You've got stuff to hide. So I get it when you're nervous that people expose you. All right, let's see what else you have to say. The group, right? We know. And we have a list of everybody that's on the page. So look, if you want to be a part of that page, that's great. Is because it? You come back here and smile in my face. Smiling. Yeah, I'm going to talk for a little bit. And, no. Furthermore, let me tell everybody something online. Because some of y'all are cute. You in the online community, the GD Connect, 
But you're just there because you're a monitoring spirit. Because you're running back to that unlock page, lying and slandering like the rest of them. Wait a second. First of all, nobody has come on. To, listen, I'm going to I'm going to only talk about the 220 because after this rant is a whole nother issue. But before listen, he's dealing with 220 people. Nobody has come and slandered. Now, there are people that are still in the unlocked are still on the JV community and they've taken screenshots of stuff that's been posted there and they've brought it over to the page for whatever reason, to point out hypocrisy to whatever. If what they're saying is something that's not um, true or appropriate or it's coming from a place of hurt, we disciple them through that. We, we dig and we ask questions and we say like, why is this bothering you so bad? Or what is it about this that's got you so upset? Like we talk through it, but suggesting that like there's somehow like there's a nefarious plot happening, maybe just for one second, consider the fact that they're on both pages because they're struggling with one who's telling the truth and two, why aren't they being seen or heard? I mean, you're, you're so quick to think that everybody's like got this nefarious plot against you. Maybe it's not about you. Let me tell you something. I told folks the other day, I'm going to give you the list this week of everybody in the online community that's on that page. And don't ask them a question. Don't send a message. Ban all of them for life from that page. So I suggest right now, Skippy, you get on your phone and you start coming out of that slanderous nonsense. Are you for real? If people that go to Global Vision or if people that are on the Global Vision Facebook page are in the unlocked group, you've instructed Justin and Casey to ban them for life from your page without a conversation. I shouldn't be surprised because it's so on brand for you, Greg, because the idea of Matthew 18 is such a foreign concept to you, you don't do it. You don't Matthew 18 anybody. And you just proved it right there. Kick people out of your group? How is that leaving the 99 to go for the one? If you think my group is so bad and so terrible, why aren't you shepherding the people in that group? Why aren't you sitting down and having a conversation with them? But no, your response is to ban them for life from your page. What? I'm sorry. How is that shepherding the flock? But again, you make my point for me. You always tell on yourself. You're a bad shepherd, Greg. You're a bad shepherd. You're harming the sheep. You just proved it. Listen, I got people talk crap about me all the time. But you don't drag my kids into it. Okay. Here we go. You can go. hate me and my wife. You can hate this church. You can hate my shirts. You can lie and say we destroyed the tent our set. You can call the news media. What? I never called the news media, ever. So I ain't having it. It, it. There's a line, folks. There's a line. So is the line where we don't talk about people's kids? Okay, first of all, Evan's 18. So that's who you're talking about. You're talking about Evan. He's 18. Let's talk about the fact that you have a son who is doing things that are dangerous, so dangerous and detrimental that you lock your house down. You call secure, the security guards at your church to come and protect your, your, your house and, and your facility because you're worried about people that are going to potentially come to your house because of things that your son has done. But you don't warn me about any of that until after I find out about it, after my daughter's already dating your son. 
You don't tell me about any of it. You don't warn me as a parent. So here's the thing about that. Evan came into our lives and the process of that created some really significant trauma, including when he almost died in my house and I wasn't sure what to do. And I reached out to Ty who ignored my phone call, which by the way is the only time that I initiated contact with Ty ever. So I send a text message saying, hey, by the way, Evan's in my house, tactocardic, and you wait 30 minutes, Ty, to respond back to me and tell me, oh, well, if he's on day three or four, he's fine and I'm done dealing with him and I've been dealing with him for five years and I don't want to do this anymore and he's on his own and blah, 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 blah. Like, really, is this where we want to go? Is this where, is this, like, the, thi the things that I know about your kids that I haven't said. Evan was an adult by the time I released that information. And I really didn't like, I haven't said everything because I'm not an asshole. Because I realize we don't bring kids into it. But part of this story with Evan is our story. It's ours to tell, it's our experience but I haven't exposed even a 10th of what I, of what I know, because you're right. We don't bring kids into it. We don't bring kids into it, but that issue with Evan, first of all, he's an adult. Second of all, you guys brought that into our lives. We didn't go looking for it. We didn't go asking for it. And you certainly did not give us any heads up or warning of what was even being dealt with. It wasn't until, even when you, Ty, came down off the stage and said, Abby's the best thing that's ever happened to Evan. He's never loved anybody outside of himself like he loves Abby. Nobody's ever gotten Evan to respond the way that Abby gets him to respond. I didn't even know. I didn't even know at that point what was being dealt with. I had no idea. I didn't find out until later. So even when you came down off the stage and told me that, you still weren't honest with me about what was going on. You still didn't tell me the kind of danger and harm that my daughter was in. So you want to talk about like kids? Listen, the things I haven't said. There's a limit, you understand, right? Yeah, there is a limit. So I ain't not talking, so let me tell you something. I, I'm going to say a few things. That just, I think, are very important just need to be said. I, I ain't Wednesday night or Sunday crowd in a while. It's just silly stuff. It started silly. It went to slander, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So the other day, right, I'm preaching. It went to slander? You mean like when you filed a false police report against us, accusing us of sex trafficking children? What? Like, in the slander game, Greg, you're king of the hill, buddy. Do you know, I'm, I'm almost 48 years old. Do you know how I've always counted my entire life? Let me show you. One, two, three. But apparently I can't do that now because now the steel shot on Unlock says, he's the Illuminati. What? What? First of all, there's no still shot of you on Unlocked doing this second of all who counts like that one two three you go one two three one two three one two three nobody goes one two three brother come on are you for real right now okay there's no picture of you on anyway greg whatever listen we've already established that you lie you're a liar. If you've been here this long and you still think I'm a Mason. I don't, and I don't care if you are. I'm not your guy. I'm not, I'm not your guy. I'm just not. Help me, Holy Ghost. So I'm going to tell you why I'm bringing all this up. Because there's, there's all kind of anti-Gregmock pages that I ain't never said a word about. I never will and don't care. But I don't tell you why that one's so dangerous. Because not only is it full of lies, which, ironically enough, 
Even the posts you've deleted, we've got all the pages printed out. I haven't deleted any posts. Every comment, every like, because I'm going to tell you why. Because I talked to the lawyer the other day. <laughs> you talked to the lawyer. Okay, good. If your lawyer is worth any amount of money that you're paying him, your lawyer is going to tell you, tread lightly, Gregory, tread lightly. Because slander, really hard to prove. But I do think it's hilarious that you talk about how you have all of these other hate groups, these hate pages, but you're worried about mine that at this point only had 220 people in it. So why are you worried about my group, Greg? Why is my 220 when there's thousands of other hate pages for you? First of all, mine's not a hate page. I've, I've established it very clearly. Not a, a Greg Locke hate page not an anti Greg Locke page. It's just not, it's not, it's not even what things about. And now you're telling me you're screen grabbing stuff. You've got pages printed out of stuff people have said and stuff that I've deleted. First of all, I've deleted anything unless in the process of people kind of venting through their stuff, they say something and I say, you know, you're like, if you can't prove that, knock it off because we had, listen, Greg, one thing you and I can both agree on, Jackie Thames, Thames, whatever her name is, Barbara Thomas, whatever her name is, whatever she chooses to go by, not playing with a full deck. And yeah, she put some stuff out there that's just like, I'm not about that. I'm not about it. Okay, what else do you have to say? You better know we got some good ones. The amount of slander and lie, and I've got nothing but a slam dunk case. Okay, say I won't. You got the wrong one. Say I won't. You won't. You won't. Because if you do, I will counter sue you for the false police report, which, by the way, you knowingly filed it. You knew it was false when you did it. And that is a felony in the state of Tennessee which carries up to 15 years in jail. So, no you won't, Greg, because if you do, burden of proof is on you to prove that whatever's been said is slander. So go ahead and prove it. And secondly, I will counter sue you for the false police report, accusing me, my husband, and the Borchers of sex trafficking children. So, you won't. You won't do it, but have at it if you like to. And, and it's not, listen, and it's not that I won't, it's that I am. So I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to give you an ultimatum. Oh, okay. I'm going to give you a little grace. I don't yeah. care what you do with your stupid page and your church you're starting on April the 6th here in Mount Juliet. You are hilarious. We're not starting a church. It's a family gathering, which, by the way, you guys copied. It's hilarious. We're just getting together as people that have come out of the trauma of dealing with you to come together and pray and worship and fellowship. It's like a family reunion. It's not a church. We're not starting a church. Where do you like the things you think, you know, are hilarious to me. And I've already said this to you. I've told you this in an email. I told you, I've said this to Ty's face, the things that you think, you know, you don't know. You just have no idea. Yeah, I'll tell you about that here in a minute, too. We might be here in a minute. If that page is still up at the end of the month. It will be. I promise you. I promise you in the mighty name of Almighty God, may the Holy Spirit strike me dead if I don't see you in court. The number of times you say, may God strike me dead. When, if I'm lying, God strike me dead. I, I will see you in court. God strike me dead. You better be careful, Greg. You're lucky he's so long suffering and he hasn't done it yet. Cause you're a liar. You don't tell the truth and you're not going to see me in court. Maybe you will. Who knows? Let's see if you really, anyway, nothing on the page. You, first of all, anyway, I'm not a lawyer. 
And some of the things, you know, I would be told by an attorney to. Absolutely. Enjoy your cruise. Oh, I did enjoy my cruise. Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm jacked up about this. I hope you're watching right now, you Jezebel. Took me two and a half weeks, but I'm watching. And uh, the fact that I'm not a Jezebel, that's why you say it. I don't know that our church has ever had a bigger witch. Practicing witch than Jim Rockwell. I'm sorry, you want to talk about slander? A practicing witch? Yeah, okay. See, that's the thing. And I've said it on the Unlocked page in the last couple of weeks. Greg, you know I'm not a practicing witch. You know it. But you have to say all that stuff to, like, spin up your base, which is dwindling. It's a very tiny base. But you have to say that kind of stuff. You have to use these buzzwords like Jezebel, practicing witch. But you know it's not true. And that's what terrifies you. Let me tell you something. I'm going to say something that's going to make some of you real nervous right now, but it's the truth. And it might make me a little emotional. Jim Rockwell destroyed my friendship with Greg Borchers. <laughs> what? Oh, I'd love to see where this goes. Listen, I'm not going to talk about the Borchers situation, but I will say. I wasn't even friends with the Borchers until after they left Global Vision. Like, I knew them because Lisa was our real estate agent and helped us buy the house. And Matt and I also met with Greg and Lisa about the $100,000, which I've talked about. I've talked about that um, on my Facebook page. But, but like, when when... <laughs> I won't say what happened with that. That's not my story to tell. But I do have a three-hour phone conversation with Ty where she talks about what happened with the Borchers. And it doesn't have anything to do with me. Nothing. Greg Borchers would have been the most salvageable person that ever had to leave our church. Do you hear me? I didn't say he'd be back on staff. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you specify he's not getting back on staff. <laughs> the most salvageable person to leave his church. What did he even do, Greg? What did Greg Borchers even do that he needed salvaging from? Because you certainly have never told him. You've never sat down with him in a Matthew 18 style. You've never had a conversation with him. Tell me I'm wrong. Since, since the moment you requested through somebody else that he turned in his resignation, you've not said one word to Greg Borchers. Even though he's reached out to you, you've ignored him. People think I'm a prick and a jerk all the time. That's a Bible word, I get nervous. So it's pissed I'm about to say that. Greg Borchers was one of my dearest friends. Yeah, he was. And you treated him like crap. You for nobody's tribe in the world more than the Grand Borchers. She ruined my friendship with him. How? And has he ruined right now. Oh, okay. How would you hmm. know? How would you know if I have him ruined? You haven't talked to him. You haven't spoken to him. He's under the spell. <laughs> I'd have dinner with you this week. This week I'd have dinner with you. But she got him convinced that now he's the pastor of the new church that they're going to start in town. We aren't starting a church. Where are you getting this information from? We aren't starting a church. Good Lord. Listen. Wait a second. Is that why you're so spun up? Because you think we're starting a church? So you're worried the handful of people that are still in your church might come to our church? Is that really what's happening right now? First of all, the people that are currently still at your church, I mean, the scales are thick. 
Trust me, they're not going anywhere. I love Greg Borchers. I think he can preach a little bit. I think he's got a healing gift in his hands. Yeah, he does. I think he's under the domination of a Jezebel spirit from Jen Rockwell. <laughs> Listen, if you think Greg Borchers listens to anybody other than the Holy Spirit, good Lord, you love Greg Borchers. You love him so much you've ignored him for, I mean, it's February 15th. They turned in their resignation on February 26th of 2023. So it's been almost a year. You love him so much you haven't talked to him in, over, in almost a year. Okay. It's going to short circuit his ministry and his marriage. Because she is a massive snake. If that page is up one day after this month's over, I swear to you, with everything I am, I will sue you for everything you have, and here's why. Here's why. Don't clap. That was abrupt. If I'm not your guy, go to their page. If I am your guy, pages like that should disgust you. Hmm? If he is your guy, the unlocked page should break your heart. It should break your heart. Just like all of our hearts have been broken. If Greg Locke is your guy, you should see the unlocked page. You should see. You should see what people are saying. You should come and see. Those who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. There's other people, by the way, that would still be in our church if she hadn't witched them. Witched them? What does that even mean? He says all of this stuff, but he offers no proof. Be specific. What have I done that, one, suggests I'm a practicing witch, two, says that I'm a Jezebel, or three, have witched anybody? What have I done specifically? Burden of proof is on you, Greg. Prove it. I told our staff, don't wish you. I said, look, I don't want anybody even telling me anymore. We got people in that group. I know exactly what's going on. I, I got enough stuff for litigation, I can promise you. And I got slammed up case. How no, you don't. Marquette is? Stick your hand up. No, Matt, yeah, a lot of you. She has a massive platform. I know Madison. She's, she's a friend of ours, you know, uh, loosely. No matter what you think about Madison, they reached out to Madison Marquette the other day. And in her character, she called us to let us know. First of all, let me just say this. I have never reached out to anybody. I have never initiated contact with anybody. Everybody that's on my unlocked page is there because they came to me. I didn't go to them. When I left Global Vision, I unfriended and blocked everybody that was connected to that church because I knew that by them being connected to me, it would be bad for them. So I, I've i never reached out to anybody. I Listen, I'm smart enough to know there are things that I can't say. So I'm not going to say the name, but the person he just mentioned, I didn't reach out to her. I didn't. She, she reached out to me. She contacted me first. I didn't reach out to her. I've not reached out to anybody. They want her platform. I don't want her platform. I, I actually, clearly, I, I don't, I clearly don't need her platform because I've got Greg's platform. He's doing all the work for me. Jen Colton said, oh, we want to use your platform. We want to expose Greg Law. I didn't call her and I didn't say that. I've never said that. It's not true. So you know what they've been doing? I'm talking a little bit. I hope you're okay. It'd be a bad time to have to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I'm about to get that chair. So I just called us and said, y'all need to have y'all's head on a swivel. Y'all need to pay attention. Let's just some of the things they've been doing as of late. This is why I'm bringing this up. Because then this stuff comes to light. I'm the kind of guy to get out ahead of stuff. You know why? Because I ain't got Jack Spratt to hide. If you don't have anything to hide, then why are you worried about what I'm doing? 
Oh yeah, you know what is the... what sign? The the logs, the the money things, right? Oh yeah, his financial records. That. Yeah, my son's like, okay, if you have nothing to hide, where are your where show us your financial records. <laughs> They're bad with money. You know how many audits we've been through? Them? <laughs> we don't believe in audits. Okay, dear IRS, we have nothing to hide. Dear FBI, you've already interviewed me. We have nothing to hide. Dear CIA, I know you work for Biden completely and you're liberal to the core, but we have nothing to hide. <laughs> Dear Democrat, I'm not scared of you. Dear Republican, I'm not scared of you. Dear Biden. Okay, but this is the thing, Greg. I don't care about the IRS, the FBI, the CIA, Democrats, Republicans. Who cares about what they think about your financial records? The people that have given money to your church, to your adoption foundation, they have a right to know. We have a right to know what's being done with that money. I don't know anybody that's given money to your church that has seen the books. But here, let me just make it plainly clear for you. I am formally requesting to see your financial records. I want to see where all the money that's being given to you is going. Where's it going? I want to see it. Prove it. I don't care what the IRS says. I don't care what your stupid bank audits say. I'm not worried about them. I want to see it for myself. I've given you money. I want to see where it goes. I'm not scared of you. Dear post office, we're not scared of you. Dear man, bring them all. Let them all. Let, let anybody. Listen, I have opened us up and I said, I don't care who. Come do an investigation. Okay. Of my life and my wild expenditures. What? I live next door to Double Wide that we wrapped in logs to make it look like a log cabin. Okay, Greg. <laughs> all right. Uh, listen. Okay. Let me see. Let's see how much money you've spent on your double wide. Let's see how much money you've spent on Kiara and Chance's house. Let's see how much you've spent on vehicles and trips and all of it. Let's see where all the money from the Adoption Foundation has gone. Where is it gone? Who have you helped? You initially got $400,000 by your own accounting, by your own admission from the stage, saying that you would pay for all of the expenses for people to adopt kids. Prove it. Let's see it. Let's see because I've got people that have worked with the Adoption Foundation that are saying different. I used to be afraid. I don't want people to know I live next door. I got a closet full of ARs. I live next door. We got 24 hour security. We got a Listen, our guys shake down the DoorDash delivery guys when they show up. I ain't worried about you. Well, he, he's in the Illuminati. He's, he's sex trafficking children. I wish any organization on the planet. Do you realize I've been under so much scrutiny for the last 10 years of my life? If any of that stuff was true, I'd be just like T.D. Jakes. I'd be all over the new for sleeping with some man. You know why I'm not? Because we don't have anything to hide. I'm not perfect, but I promise you I try to live squeaky and clean as a hound's do. <laughs> then you shouldn't be worried about anything that I'm saying. What are you worried about? You notice I haven't like anyway. Squeaky. I hope I'm happy. I'm happy myself. So, let me get a drink. That Bible reading got me. See, I'm not being crazy. I'm being calm. <laughs> but I'm being calm telling the truth. No, you're not. I'm being calm telling the truth. No, you're not. So they try to get Madison to use the platform. So here's their here's their scheme. Ever if they don't no clap? No. Here's the scheme. We have a scheme. Okay, well, I'm curious. This will be news to me. You have a scheme? I love this. First of all, 
They're going to have our kids taken away from us. Because we're unfit. Now, this is what they want to get online, so I'm telling people. All right. Call CPS. <laughs> Listen. Stand in line. Do you know in the last five years how many times I've pissed in a cup? Because somebody got mad in this church and called CPS on me and my family and my wife and made me have to pee in a cup. I passed every drug test and I still passed every one of them. You'll pass a drug test. What about everybody else? Oh, beat my children. My kids are so stinking spoiled they get on my nerves. Listen, I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about your kids, but you are making it way too easy for me right now because I could say some stuff and I'm not going to. Because you know what? If your kids aren't going to speak out, I'm not going to tell their story for them. That's theirs to tell. To the degree that we've talked about stuff with Evan, that was our experience. And, you know, I'm sorry that we had it. it breaks my heart that we had it. But the things that your kids have told me and told other people, and the fact that we all come together and the, it's the exact same stories, someday at some point it will be your kids' stories to tell. They'll tell it. I'm not going to take that from them. I'm not going to take their story from them. If at some point they ever want to share, that's for them to decide. But... You and I both know, Greg Locke, you would never hand your kids a microphone. You would never hand your kids a microphone and say, God, strike my kid dead if they're, if they're lying and ask them to tell the truth. I've done too much for them little rats and brats, amen? Rats and brats? Yeah, rats and brats. You always tell on yourself. You always... Tell on yourself. Live our house, any more kids, and we take care of all of them. Huh? Yeah, see? That's how that Italian band cook. They don't come because they like me, they come because they like our food. Biscuits and gravy at midnight and all that bunch of nonsense. And I'm just like, CPS, stand in line. When we went through our whole debacle, man, we've had our, they've come to our house, they've come to schools, the school, our school, they've come to the office, we've had more drug tests than a junkie. I mean, every, we're going to have your kids take away. No, you're not. <laughs> My kids are all worried. Oh, oh, what are we going to do? We're going to laugh at you and your stupidity. My kids aren't going anywhere because I've not done anything. And you slandered us online. And you got people in the unlocked group thinking things about our family that, let me say two things. Number one, aren't true. And number two, are true. And you ain't got no business running your trap about it. So you admit there's some truth. Yeah. Yep. And I don't know, no business running our trap about it. Okay, well. Yeah. I don't know. Again, you're you're um what you're doing here, Greg, is you're trying to force me into a position of saying stuff that I've unequivocally said I'm not gonna talk about. I'm not gonna talk about it publicly. I'm not gonna do it. It's not my story to tell, and I haven't told it. Hear me? That's evil. That's witchcraft. What's witchcraft is rebellion, which is what you're currently under, not me. You say that CPS has come and, and you, you know taken drug tests and done all that. Listen, Greg, <laughs> I've never had CPS come and talk to me about anything. I've never had to do a drug test. 
Just saying. So listen. Where you go to church is on you. Who your pastor is, who the apostle Peter in your life is, that's on you. But don't you think for a second that we ain't going to get on that list and ignore every single person. Now, we got some people in there. We got it. But don't think for a second. If you're on that page and you ever think for 10 seconds you're going to sing on a worship team, go somewhere else. What? You won't push a broom in this church because it's nothing but lies. No, it's not true. That's not true. And you better be careful because I'm glad God don't work today like he did in Acts chapter 5. Yeah, you are. You're definitely glad he don't work that way. <laughs> yeah, you really are. You threaten people, Craig? Really? That's your response to people that are in the unlocked group? Threaten them? That's disgusting. But I'm going to go one step further. Ma'am. Great. And you listen to me. It's important. This is where things get real as if it hasn't yet. We good, baby? We good. Yeah, it's a mama bear. You better be glad I'm saying it. And you better be glad I'm saying it. So listen. When you try to hurt people on purpose, I got no time for you. I will warn the sheep about you. On that, you and I agree. When you try to hurt people on purpose, I'm going to warn the sheep about you. Although you do a really good job of telling on yourself. It ain't no secret. Anybody knows me. My family. I got an adult son. Don't live in, in my house. I love it. That boy's so much like me, I could kick him. Struggle with addiction for a long time. Man, you don't have to struggle much. Dear God, I've spent more money. We've prayed, we've fasted, we've counseled, we've delivered. Thanks to mine. We love it. But I'm going to tell you something. When you get online and you start trashing my son because he has an addiction. I've never, ever trashed your son because he has an addiction. I love your son. I'm not going to do it. It's not my story to tell, but I've got the text messages, Greg. Ty, I've got the text messages. I've got them. I've got the first-hand accounts of the ordeal that it was to finally get him into rehab. And you two sabotaged it the whole way through. You've crossed the line that you either come back from or I drag you back from. I'm not the one that crossed the line. But if you want to meet on that line and have a conversation about what really went down, okay, let's do it. And your mealy mouth husband. I ain't worried about him. You should be. You should be worried about my husband. You're lucky that the Lord told my husband the word patience and that my husband fears God. You're lucky that my husband, you're lucky you haven't had to deal with my husband yet. You're lucky. I'm the least, I'm the least of your concern. Because if he's a real man of God, he'd stand up and stop you. Talk about my son struggling with stuff. You do understand 
that your son struggling with stuff. Listen, I didn't say it. You put it in your movie. You're the one talking about people can't like, oh, you've got handicap spots in your church because you can't heal and cure anybody. Greg, are you for real right now? Look in a mirror. You're criticizing other people when your own house is out of order and you have no grace for anybody. The hypocrisy is astounding to me. Don't bring people's kids into it. Yeah, don't bring people's kids into it. The minute our kids started interacting, you two, Greg and Ty, should have come to Matt and I and had a conversation and been fully transparent to say, this is what we're dealing with and we care about your daughter enough to say, here's the situation. But you didn't. You didn't. You waited until your son almost died in front of my daughter before you even had a conversation with me. My, my kids put up with enough crap red lock meter, daddy. That's your you fault. Imagine? Listen, my kids have lost friends for years for me being dad. How sad. I mean, people that used to, you know, do some overnighters. Oh no, look, they found out who daddy was. They're like, oh, oh, oh. we move it. That's terrible. So I'm just saying there comes a point where as a shepherd, I've got to get the shepherding crook out. And I gotta beat back the wolves that are trying to infiltrate the sheepfold. Okay? There will be people this year that left our church that will come back and we will love them and we will take them back and never bring it up. But hear me when I tell you, they. You just threatened all of them. You really think they're gonna come back to your church? You just said, don't ever come back to my church, don't ever smile in my face. Double minded, man. You're double minded not be them. Paul said, mark them which cause divisions contrary to the doctrine I've taught you. Have no fellowship with them, but avoid them. He said, Diotrephes, name them. Hermogenes and Phygelia, name them. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his doings. He named them. Yeah, it's called unlocked. That's what we're doing. I'm sorry it doesn't work out in your favor. The fruit speaks for itself. Don't get, listen, if that bothers you, I'm not your guy. I'm not your guy. So if you understood, don't, don't Google me. If you understood what was out there that I could talk about and don't, you would understand why this is such an affront to truth. It's dangerous to our church. It's dangerous to your lies. It's dangerous to the sheep. It's dangerous because a shepherd should smell like their sheep. Here's where it's really dangerous too. I mean, let's just, let's just put it all on the table because that's what we're doing right now. It's dangerous to your pocketbook. You're hemorrhaging people. You're hemorrhaging people. That's what this is really about. People are finally catching on. I'm not going and telling anybody anything other than I put it on my Facebook page. I have ignored news media. I've ignored podcasters. I've ignored magazines. I've ignored, I mean, I gave some people some respect because they know you and I'm not going to say names, but I've had conversations with some, but I haven't gone public. Like people come to me and they want me to share what I know. I just put it on my Facebook page and people come to me and they find it. I created a very private secret Facebook page People found me. I haven't gone to anyone, including the person that you mentioned, which I'm not going to say because I'm smarter than that. I wish you were. This still has, I don't know, 30 minutes left. I don't know what else you say, but I think I've pretty much covered it. I'm not going to 
keep watching this. This has gone on for almost an hour. I've probably given this way more time than I need to. The fruit speaks for itself. That's just the fact of the matter. And you're not going to sue me because you have no grounds to sue me. Uh, but if your attorney likes taking your money and is telling you you have a case and you decide to proceed with that, okay. You brought on the fight. Get ready for the counter sue. It's not what I want to do. What I want is for you to repent. What I want for you to do is start doing what God's told you to do. Get your house in order. Get your church in order. Get your life in order. Start being the shepherd that God called you to be. Stop grifting. Stop lying. Just stop. Just do what God has told you to do. And stop assuming you know everything. I don't. You don't. And by the way, take a pause, buddy. We're not starting a church. That's the last thing that we want to be doing right now. Just breathe, dude. It'll be just fine.